Hello, there you are. In a previous tutorial, we noted that knowing the song's key meant that we would know the most likely notes to appear in the melody. And we also noted that these notes would come from the scale of that key. Now, the huge difference between one key on one scale and another is the number of sharps or flats or black notes that each one has. And the huge similarity is the interval between one note and the other going up in pitch. I will explain all this and more using a variety of instruments I happen to have to hand, rather more than my family would rather I had to hand. But there you go. Now, the first key and scale that we learn is C. It has no sharps or flats. And it's conveniently laid out for you on a keyboard. You can just play the white notes from C to C, like this. Convenient on the glockenspiel. Convenient on the chime bars if you take out the black notes. You just have to learn where the notes are on a steel pan, but nonetheless, there is a pattern. Note, miss one, miss one, cross, miss one, miss one, miss one, cross. Again, there's a pattern for the guitar. Note, miss one, miss one, next one, miss one, miss one, miss one, next one. Scale of G on a piano. Now, for the scale of G on chime bars, you want to start at G. G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G. But actually, you replace F with F sharp. Scale of G. Note, miss one, miss one, cross, miss one, miss one, miss one, cross. Scale of G <clears throat> starts with the open string of G, so you play open like that. So it goes open, up two, up two, up one, up two, up two. Two, up one. Get a D on a piano. Scale a D on the chime bars. You're now going to keep your black F sharp, but replace C sharp. C with C sharp. Begins and ends with D. You can see, at a glance, two black notes, two sharps. The next one up is A. So we're going to start at A. And we know it goes. A, B. We're keeping a C sharp. D, E. We're keeping the F sharp. Ah, but now we're going to play G sharp, which... In my workshops and in pans, we call A flat. In conventional theory, it will be called G sharp. You can see at a glance, it has three 
black notes to the sharps. On piano. Scale of C, all white notes, no black notes. On a piano, consecutive, adjacent, like on an electric piano. When you play, watch what happens to the hammers. This C has seen better days, so I'm going to start up here, playing all white notes up here. So it's note, miss one, miss one, next one, miss one, this one, this one, next one. I'll show you on D, same principle, but now I'm going to play two sharps. Instead of C, I'll play C sharp. Instead of F, I'll play F sharp. And if I played all the notes, watch where they hit. that I have a what I call a proper piano, an acoustic instrument at home and I've just taken the casing off it to demonstrate the inner workings. When I was a seven-year-old first learning to play the piano I thought the black notes were somehow different, exotic, an add-on in some way but they're not. It's just a different colour and maybe even a moral for our times. Black or white they're just notes in a sequence and they help us learn theory. So, you know you're in C. You're only going to play the white notes on a piano. And on a steel pan, you'll only play the notes on the bottom and the right hand side. You won't be able to see these marked because the light's shining. But the circle of fifths will tell you you're in C and these are all the notes which aren't sharps or flats. And that's what you play. The minute you move to G and you know you have one sharp, that sharp is F sharp. So you knock off this F here. So the notes you play start here and go around to there. When you come to D, circle of fists, soprano pan, you now know that you're going to move one more anti-clockwise. So you won't be playing the F or the C, but you'll play all these notes, including in this little circle which is F-sharp and C-sharp, and so on. Ace in it. Wrapping up, I hope you noted the ways in which the different instruments arrange their scales. Two, how all scales go up in the same pattern of bigger or smaller musical steps. Three, why we learn the scale of C first on a piano keyboard, and how this scale demonstrates where the bigger and smaller gaps lie. Lastly, you may have noted the state of my piano and the missing A string off my guitar. Well, the piano never really survived the great washing machine disaster of 2005 and there's no excuse for the guitar.